Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I'll talk about how to integrate Fast API into your RAC application and how to run Fast API on top of Llama Index and VV database uh, to help you to expose your RAC functionality through the API so that it will be callable outside of your environment uh, by third-party applications and so on. Okay, so. Uh, all the code is part of uh, Sparrow application and URL uh, to the Sparrow, which is our open source project for data extraction, you'll find below the video. And uh, specifically, LLM RAC functionality is implemented uh, under the name Lemming inside Sparrow. So all the code you'll find under Lemming uh, related to, the, to this specific video. Okay, so FastAPI is a great uh, framework to expose uh, your Python logic through the API. And uh, it's very simple <coughs> sorry, to use. And I basically have a single uh, script API uh, where I have defined all the logic that is required to expose uh, RAC through the API. So first of all, I uh, define FastAPI application here. Uh, set some properties uh, to be uh, for the application to be callable through course through cross domain origin and then I specify input uh, for my post request uh, so the input will be a query which will come as uh, a set of fields and set of types uh, to fetch from the document then it's uh, just a test uh, uh, endpoint over here uh, that helps to test uh, if API is working or not and here is the main uh, POST endpoint, which accepts uh, uh, query uh, class type. Uh, as we saw uh, before, this uh, this query is based on the fields and types, right? And then I specify a path and uh, tag LLM inference so that it's easier uh, easier to uh, refer and identify this endpoint on uh, when you access Fast API documentation in the browser, for example. And as a parameter, I'm using annotated uh, object uh, passing query, uh, but this is part of uh, fast API application uh, functionality. And the reason for that is because I want to pass example so that uh, when user would uh, browse through the uh, endpoint documentation, a user would see automatically what kind of uh, data he can send to this endpoint. Uh, this is the simplest example when we, we fetch a single invoice number, which is of type integer. And then here we construct the query, and then we call build rack pipeline. This comes uh, from uh, we can see from the import from the RAC pipeline from here. And this is the method. And uh, you should watch my previous video where, where I explain all the steps uh, that involve implementation of the RAC pipeline with Llama index uh, and VAV8 and dynamic pedantic class. So all the steps here are being executed. And in case of Sparrow, the same rack can be invoked either from the command line or the same functionality can be invoked from, from Fast API. So to learn how to invoke it from the command line, you should watch my previous video there I describe it all step by step. Okay, so over here we build the uh, pipeline and then uh, in the next step we execute the query we, pr we call process query and process query comes from the engine script and the same process query method would be invoked if you would call it uh, this rack from the command line. So both methods uh, for pipeline creation and for the query execution are usable from uh, FastAPI endpoint and from the command line execution. This is done for to simplify the maintenance in the future. Okay, okay, we then get back the response and send it back to the client. Okay, so now we could see how it works. And uh, so here is the we got in the first uh, terminal here, this is the fast API endpoint already running. And then here we could execute the call to fetch invoice number. And here is another call which fetching uh, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, a lot of fields from the document. And the good thing with FastAPI that all the uh, RAC pipeline preparation steps are executed 
out of the box by first API in parallel, so we don't need to do any asynchronous implementation. Uh, the only bottleneck here is actual LLM execution, and LLM is executed with Olama, uh, in this case on a separate machine. But at least currently, Olama works only sequentially, so there is no option to run multiple requests on, on a single Olama instance in parallel. So uh, FastAPI request would wait until the uh, Olama is free, and then it will execute in sequential order. Uh, obviously, there are workarounds to install, let's say, multiple Olama instances and do some load balancing, but hopefully in the future, Olama also out of the box will support uh, multiple threads uh, running with multiple requests. So now let's see how it works. So let's uh, let's run this uh, more complex request over here, and we got uh, in a, in. A, just below the second, we got everything prepared. Uh, Lama index, everything is 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 there, and then we you know, send request to the actual Lama to fetch the answer. And if we run in parallel another request to get just invoice number, uh, we can see that <coughs> both uh, requests uh, were executed uh, in parallel. So the first one is still waiting, and the uh, second one is executed as well at the same time. And now the only wait time is here, retrieving answer. So both requests are waiting to retrieve answer. Obviously, uh, Olama works with the first one, with the more complex one at the moment, and the second one is in queue. So as soon as the first one will be completed, then the second one will start to be processed. Uh, it takes around, now it runs locally, uh, and it takes around to fetch all this data, uh, like uh, uh, 50 seconds or something. So we already got the data for the first one, and if you look over here, we can see, yeah, it took uh, 63 seconds. And now as, as the first one was done, the second one is executing, and it should be faster because yeah, because it's just a single field, uh, and yeah, it just it was uh, below below, uh, so it was very quick. Uh, here we have 63 seconds here, 63.9. So uh, the second one was very quick, and now uh, just to show you, if I execute the. Uh, this request once again without blocking the Olama with the longer request and it would execute way faster So we got in here all the uh, steps uh, like uh, connecting to VV, loading Olama uh, Building index and so on and it seems like, like because those steps are always the same for all for for the request, fast API is smart enough to cache somehow this um, th this data, and it it doesn't uh, uh, re-execute uh, those preparation steps again and again. Because if you run the same thing from command line, uh, the preparation steps uh, take in total in total like five seconds. Here we we got like 0 0.8. So this means fast API is speeding up by caching things. Okay, uh, yeah, it's actually 19 seconds, like uh, like it was uh, similar to the previous example, and you can see now, because there was no, Olama was uh, not busy, right, we, it executed uh, way faster, this uh, invoice number fetching, uh, simply because there was no long request running, so, uh, and my point is to show that in this case, fast API runs Asynchronously, because it can take the second request, even the first one is not complete yet, and not only take it, executes uh, like those um, preliminary steps, like connecting to the VAV, building a Llama index, setting up the environment, and then it sends a request to the Llama. Uh, so all this happens in parallel, and only Llama executes requests in a sequential way. Okay, so this was a quick video to show you how fast API runs on top of uh, Rack implemented with Llama index. Uh, hopefully you find it useful and uh, th this this very practical example that helps you to understand how to expose Rack functionality to the outside of your machine and uh, other systems or users to be able to use it. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.